He likes this story because of its fantastic account of how the elephant's trunk became so long. It would help Santosh greatly if you would imagine yourself as a little child. Please help me welcome Santosh Gopas Gopasada, the elephant's child. The elephant's child, Santosh Gopasada. Before I begin the story, let me give you some introduction that there is an elephant and it is full of insatiable curiosity. But Rudyard Kipling uses the words satiable curiosity as a play of insatiable curiosity. So when you come across satiable curiosity, it actually means insatiable curiosity. And he also refers to the readers, in this case the audience, as oh, that's beloved. That's loved. Now attend and listen. On the high and far off times, the elephant of best beloved had no trunk. He had only a blackish, bulgy nose as big as a boot that he could wriggle about from side to side, but he could not pick up things with it. But there was one elephant, a new elephant, the elephant's child, who was full of satiable curiosity, which means he asked ever so many questions. And he lived in Africa, and he filled all Africa with his satiable curiosities. He asked his tall aunt, the ostrich, why her tail feathers grew just so. And his tall aunt, the ostrich, spanked him with her hard, hard claw. He asked his tall uncle, the giraffe, what made his skin spotted. And his tall uncle, the giraffe, spanked him with his hard, hard hoof. And still, he was full of sensible curiosity. He asked questions about everything that he saw or heard or felt or smelt or touched. And all his uncles and aunts panned him. And still he was full of satiable curiosity. One fine morning, this satiable elephant's child asked a new fine question that he had never asked before. He asked, what does the crocodile have for dinner? Then everybody said, hush! in a loud and dreadful tone, and they spanked him immediately and directly without stopping for a very long time. <laughs> by and by, when that was finished, he came upon a kolo kolo bird, and he said, my father has spanked me, and my mother has spanked me, and my uncles and aunts have spanked me for my satiable curiosity, and still I want to know what the crocodile has for dinner. Then the kolo kolo bird said with a mournful cry, go to the banks of the great gray green Crazy limpo forever. <laughs> that very next morning, the sensible elephant's child took a hundred pounds of bananas and a hundred pounds of sugar cane and seventeen melons and said to all his dear families, Goodbye, I am going to the great grey green greasy limpo forever to find out what the crocodile has for dinner. Then he went away eating melons and throwing the rind, that is the outer skin of the fruit, because he could not pick it up. He went from Grahamstown to Kimberley and from Kimberley to Kamas country and from there he went east by north eating melons all the time till at last he came to the banks of the great grey green greasy limbo poor river precisely as the Kolo Kolo poet had said. Now you must know and understand O oh best beloved that till that very week and day and hour and minute this sensible elephant's child had never seen a crocodile and did not know what one was like all his sensible curiosity. The first thing that he found there was a bicolored python curled round a rock. Excuse me, said the elephant's child, but have you seen such a thing as a crocodile in these parts? The bicolored python said in a voice of dreadful scorn, Have I seen a crocodile? What will you ask me next? <laughs> Excuse me, said the elephant's child, but could you please tell me what he has for dinner? Then the bicolored python uncoiled himself very quickly from the rock and spanked the elephant's child with his scalesome, flailsome tail. That is odd, 
said the elephant child, because my father and my mother and my uncle and my aunt, not to mention the hippopotamus and the baboon, have all spanked me for my sensible curiosity, and I suppose it's the same thing. So he said goodbye very politely to the bicolored python and went along the shores until he stood on what he thought was a log of wood. <laughs> but it was really the crocodile of best beloved, and the crocodile winked one eye like this. Excuse me, said the elephant's child most politely, but do you happen to have seen a crocodile in these parts? Then the crocodile winked the other eye and lifted his tail out of the mud, and the elephant's child stepped back most politely because he did not wish to be spanked again. <laughs> Come closer, little one, said the crocodile. Why do you ask such things? Excuse me, said the elephant's child most politely. Everyone I have met in my life has spanked me, and so if it's quite all the same to you, I don't want to be spanked anymore. <laughs> Come closer, little one. For I am the crocodile. And she wept crocodile tears to show that it was quite true. Then the elephant child grew all breathless and panted and kneeled on the bank and said, You are the very person I have been looking for all these days. Will you please tell me what you have for dinner? Come closer, little one said the crocodile and I whisper. Then the elephant's child put his head down close to the crocodile's musky tusky mouth and the crocodile caught him by his little nose which up to that weekday hour and minute had been no bigger than a boot. I think, said the crocodile and she said it between her teeth like this, I think I will begin with the elephant's child. At this, O oh, best beloved, the elephant's child was very much annoyed and he sped Speaking through his nose like this, Let go! You're hurting me! Then the bicolored python scuffled down from the bank and said, My young friend, if you do not now, immediately pull as hard as you ever can. It is my opinion that the crocodile will have you for dinner. <laughs> then the elephant's child sat back on his little haunches and pulled and pulled and pulled, and the nose began to stretch. And the crocodile floundered into the water, making it all creamy with the great sweeps of his tail. And he pulled and pulled and pulled. The elephant's child's nose grew longer and longer, and it hurt him really bad. <laughs> <laughs> then the elephant's child felt his leg slipping, and he said through his nose, which was now nearly five feet long, This is too much for me! <laughs> then the bicolored python came down from the bank and knotted himself around the elephant child's hind legs. And he pulled, and the elephant's child pulled, and the crocodile pulled, but the elephant's child and the python pulled hardest, and at last the crocodile let go of the elephant child's nose with a plop that you could hear all up and down the lipo. Then the elephant child sat down most hard and sudden, but first he was careful to say thank you to the bicolored python, and next he was kind to his poor pulled nose and wrapped it up all in cool banana leaves and hung it in the great gray green greasy limbo boat. What are you doing that for? said the bicolored python. Excuse me, said the elephant's child, but my nose is badly out of shape and I'm waiting for it to shrink. The bicolored python scrummed. Then you'll have to wait for a long time. Some people do not know what is good for them actually. <laughs> the elephant's <laughs> child sat there for three days waiting for his nose to shrink, but it never grew any shorter. At the end of the third day, a fly came and stung the elephant's child on his shoulder. And before he knew anything, what he was doing, he lifted up his trunk and hit that fly dead at the end of it. Before he thought what he was doing, the elephant child put out his trunk and plucked a large bundle of grass and stuffed it into his own mouth. The advantages of having a trunk, said the bicolored python. You couldn't have done that with a little boot nose earlier. Now how do you feel about being spanked again? <laughs> Excuse me, said the elephant child, but I should not like it at all. Would you like to spank somebody? Said the bicolored python. I should like it very much indeed, said the elephant's child. Well, the bicolored python said, you will find that new nose of yours very useful to spank people with. Thank you, said the elephant's child. I'll remember that and now I think I'll go home to all my dear families and try. <laughs> So the elephant's child went home across Africa frisking and whisking his trunk. One dark evening he came back to all his dear families and he coiled up his trunk and said, How do you do? 
They were very glad to see him and immediately said, Come here and be spanked for your searchable courtesy. Pooh! said the elephant's child. Yeah, I don't think you people know anything about spanking, but I do, and I'll show you. Then he uncurled his hidden trunk and knocked two of his dear brothers head over heels. <laughs> oh, bananas, said they. Where did you learn that trick? And what have you done to your nose? I got a new one from the crocodile <laughs> on the banks of the great greasy, greasy Limpopo River, said the elephant's child. I asked him what he asked for dinner, and he gave me this to keep. <laughs> Then that bad elephant style spanked all his dear families for a long time till they were greatly astonished. At last, things grew so exciting that his dear families went off one by one in a hurry to the banks of the great gray green greasy Limpopo River to borrow new noses from the crocodile. When they came back, nobody spanked anybody anymore and ever since that day, oh best beloved, all the elephants you will ever see have trunks precisely as the trunk of the sage will have been Mr. Tyler, if you would be kind enough to give us one minute on the watch so that we've got time to fill out our 